Your son has a very good exercise that we term it that that should be a renewal of political pledge to the citizen of this country in this current situation that we are facing that the pathway to peace and stability as the musicians were singing there i picked something from there when his excellency president was saying the song was we are decided to follow jesus and no turn back i hope we have decided the pathway of peace and security for this this country and there will be no decision of turning it back like what we have seen in the last three years that one thing that i like to assure you and before i could go ahead your excellency president allow me this opportunity to share with you a message from our citizens when we heard about the roadmap i in person toured the 10 states and i've picked a message from one of the elders from UT state and he insisted if you find a space to speak before the leaders never ever forget to pass to them this message the message is as follow and this message is to all of you as our leaders the message is peace is a product of political discipline let me repeat peace is a product of political discipline we have seen in all the political establishment in this country within their parties and within the function of the government we have seen political indiscipline that has brought us today here that's the reality so take it from that elder i'm conveying his message and that political discipline that we wish today to see is interpreted by the following one regaining of trust and confidence honestly i'm a south sudanese whatever will cost me with the message i would like to tell you sincerely and openly that we have seen deficit in trust and confidence as our leaders we are out there we can see messages counter messages that are not matching also the political discipline will be demonstrated if you are able to allocate resources from our own revenue to deliver this roadmap we have seen a new trend that would like to raise to your leadership your excellency president a new trend have come we are allocating crude oil for road construction crude oil for the payment of salary areas we need crude oil for the implementation of the agreement because that's a trend that we have seen we like to communicate that that also demonstrate the political discipline and previously we have had statements that this peace agreement it is imposed now this roadmap it is our own making without anybody we term as a foreigner can we demonstrate political will that we are going to implement this agreement and the implementation of this agreement means the following means stopping our citizen from killing themselves as we see now across the country it means improvement of our economy we are a rich country we can't have a value of one dollar to 60 or 600 something please we are a producing oil country we can feed ourselves without asking anybody to pull their hand to their pockets and we like to take this opportunity to put the following concerns as a civil society when we heard about the roadmap whether we call it is deliberately the consultation that was given to us is only two hours we appreciate that nothing but please next time any national processes consider us as sons and daughters of this country and some of us are contributing for the peace and stability of this country we are not a generation that need to jump to the bush in order to sign an agreement and promote it to a title but we are generation of checking and balance asking for transparency asking for accountability asking for commitment the big question today we have for you at your various political establishment at your various title what miracle are you going to do that we have not seen in the last three years show us that you are our leaders we respected you at your various uh, capacities we wish that the primary responsibility to make us enjoy 
the vote when we voted after the struggle from 1983, which some of you are witness, that vote was we decided to remain as a citizen of our own country when we vote in the referendum. The value of that vote means our economy have to improve, means I should have access to the farms without any fear, means our women should not be raped, means our youth should not fighting among themselves for unemployment. That means a lot. In conclusion, in conclusion, I would like to raise the following. All these tasks that have been demonstrated, we trust, we believe in you, that if you commit yourself, it is easy to turn this paper to something that one day we come back to this Freedom Hall awarding you thanks that you not believe that the citizens are the ones speaking. So take responsibility to translate this document into reality. We have the following asks for your Excellency President. Since this agreement was signed, I know we have been known for shouting, for making noisy. We have never had access to really have a time to speak to our leaders. His Excellency President and First Vice President and our Vice President, we are appealing if we can get a response today. Can we have a chance as a civil society, as a youth, as a women, to have a meeting with the presidency, to express ourselves rather than shouting through the media? So I wish to hear a response for this call that we are making. But also we are taking an opportunity that this document today you sign should take into account the following recommendations. Can we open the window to sit in Rome and take Rome peace process serious as you're speaking for elections? Can we vote for elections where we are in peace and stability and we hold our hands together and we stand as the values of our national anthem says so that we can have a pathway from there our country is one. So we wish that Rome peace process will be opened up and we'll have that commitment. Finally, to conclude with that I want to end up my speech is that we hope that this document now is signed. It should be a public document. We should have access to it because dissemination means ownership. If we can educate our citizens. But also remember, if we don't disseminate this agreement, people will camouflage to give fake news, wrong information. So we wish that this, this document can be disclosed to the public. Our final joke that I like to bring to your attention as our leaders, Your Excellency President, allow me for this. We hope that the consensus that we have seen around the dredging can be used for the consensus for implementing the agreement. We need to see that consensus for the agreement. Up to here, the primary responsibility for making this country as a great country, as South Sudan that we won, as South Sudan that when we shoot the first bullet in 1983, is lying in your hands. And remember, the book of history is writing. Please let your names go to the books of good history. Thank you very much. Asante sana.